But I'm telling you what, I'm excited. I'm happy to be serving God and doing what he wants me to do. Yes, there's been some bumps along the way. But you know what? Bumps in the road make the, the trip interesting, don't they? <laughs> Hannah got a little bit car sick. Sorry, Hannah, to use your story on the way home. And thankfully, nothing real bad happened. But I said, if something real bad would have happened, you'd have had a great story to tell later on in life. You know, just mediocre. I felt bad when I got home. You know, it would have been a little different if it got a little worse. You'd have had a great story to tell you. Remember that time we went on the vacation and I got sick in the car on the way home? <laughs> You know, it's the bumps in the road that make life interesting. Sometimes it's just so smooth, we just get lulled to sleep, don't we? And so ask God to help you Amen. to be everything he wants you to be. And pray for somebody around you. It's good to see you. Good to see Rachel here. She drove all the way from Memphis. They said to see me, I think. Yeah. And Vicki said it was to see her, but it's to see a bunch of different people. But thankfully, she came to see us, and that's yeah. a good thing. We have missed her since she moved away to Memphis, and it is good to see her. And uh, she's been staying at home in Pulaski, Tennessee, uh, which is middle of nowhere. If you don't know, look it up on a map. Uh, but it is good to see her. It's good to see all of you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to be with us in this service. We have some announcements we'll share with you in just a moment about some things that are going on throughout the day and throughout the week. But uh, let's join together in prayer. As we do, I'm going to ask Brother Jeremiah if he'll lead us. Larry's talking about people sleeping in the comfortable. I'm not. <laughs> this is not comfortable for me at all. I'm excited about getting the choir back up here. <laughs> I'll be glad everybody feels safe when they get the choir back up here. This is not comfortable. <clears throat> but we are trying to be safe as we can for everyone's safety and care and well-being. But I'm excited about getting the choir back up here and getting singing on this. We might have them doing some black spiritual. You know, get up here and just snap this choir, just moving. <laughs> this place be excited. And I like, I'm excited about the choir getting back up here soon. Pray for us, we'll sing a song. <laughs> Once my soul was astray from the heavenly way, and I was wretched and vile as I could be, but my Savior in love gave me peace from above, he reached out his hand. was near to despair when he came to me there and he showed me that I could be free then he lifted my feet gave me gladness complete when he reached out his hand for me My Savior reached down for me. He had to reach way down for me. I was lost and undone without God or His Son. When He reached down His hand for me. My 
Savior, reach down for me. He had to reach his way down for me. Because I was lost and undone without God or His Son. When my Savior reached down, just a couple things by way of announcement real quick and uh, of course we will take our offering at the end of the service we'll have uh, offering plates for you uh, to put your offering in as you leave so that we're not passing those as we've been doing for the last few weeks but again uh, in encourage you to continue to give and do what God uh, wants you to do as far as giving of your tithes and offerings and thank God for what you have done and the ability we've had to keep all of our missionaries and support all of those and everything else that we do thank you so much for that um, also, at the end of the service, uh, right at the very end, as we finish up, pastors wanting to meet with anybody that's in the choir, all of the teachers, and any, any teaching uh, ministry, anything like that, bus ministry, all of you that work in any of those other areas of ministry, just to hang around in here for just a moment, uh, because we want to discuss what we need to do going forward as far as how we open those ministries back up. And so we want to get your opinions and, and feel... Uh, you out on that as well, and so if you would hang around here just for a few minutes, and we'll try to figure out what the plan is going to be going forward uh, as we as we try to get these things back online and going again. So if you will just hang around just for a few moments, and then of course tonight service at six o'clock. If you can come be a part of that, and of course Wednesday night service will be going on as well, back to our normal schedule of services now. And so hope you can be a part of all those. And then Tuesday morning we will work on the scriptures. If you can come help us with that. Uh, we'd love to have you over there helping us put scriptures together, and we'll have everything set up and ready to go. And the room is all cleaned up, ready to get messed up, so it's needing some paper dust. Pretty clean in there, isn't it, Brother Charles, when you walk through there? We need some paper dust flying around in there. So uh, if you can help us with that, we'd love to have you come. And we'll obviously give you plenty of space, and we can we can spread out in there. The room's plenty big enough for us to keep some space between us and if you need to wear a mask or whatever, that's fine. Whatever you feel comfortable doing. Uh, but we'd love to have you come be a part of that on Tuesday as well. So let's just keep all these things in mind and just, just be in prayer uh, as we go forward that God would just help us to know when and what to do and be able to get things going again and do great things. There are a lot of ministries right now that, you know, we just can't reach out like we have been. And uh, for those of us that are used to being involved in something, you know what, what it feels like right now. You want to be a part in ministering to people in that way, in that form, in that fashion. So let's be prayer, prayerful that God would help us to be able to do those things as we go forward. God bless you. There is an unseen hand to me That leads to ways I cannot see while going through uh, this world below, this hand still leads me as I go. I'm trusting to the unseen hand that guides me through uh, this weary land. And some sweet day I'll reach that strand still guided by. The unseen hand, I long to see my Savior's face and sing the story saved by grace. And there upon that golden strand, I'll praise Him for His guiding hand. Sing it with me. I'm trusting to the unseen hand. That guides me through all this weary land, and some sweet day I'll reach that strand, still guided by the unseen hand. Yeah, one day I'll see. <laughs> yeah, man, brother. <laughs> Whoo! My mule's about to run away. I'm. <laughs> Ain't God good? I'll tell you, two.
of my favorite songs was what uh, that one that Brother Terry sang, and I was over there singing with him. And uh, I, w I went up to uh, hear uh, Doyle Lawson, and uh, they were singing uh, the Helps on the Way. So I was singing behind. And the lady said, I wish, the lady said something to her husband and everything, said, oh, some stupid guy back here singing. <laughs> well, I was. I sang along <laughs> and uh, making a joyful noise unto the Lord. I want you to take your Bible and turn to the book of 1 Peter, if you will. 1 Peter chapter 1. And uh, I trust uh, the Lord will bless your heart for being here today. And we're going to talk about some things, trying to get some things back. It's, it's been a year like no other, hasn't it? But you know what? I tell you, faith that can't be tested can't be trusted. If your faith can't be tested, you just might as well forget about trusting it. So we need some faith to trust the Lord, but we need to be wise, uh, as the scripture tells us, to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove and have some wisdom about some things and may God help us to do that. Uh, we're going to be looking at 1 Peter here today and sharing some things I hope will be a blessing. Uh, we're going to be starting uh, maybe not this Wednesday night, but the following Wednesday night. And I'll tell you, if you if you come and hear these, the alphabet of the Holy Spirit, we have some of these, some are at the back, some are up here. And this is just every, like adoption, baptism. We're not talking about water baptism, about spirit baptism. And then uh, com the uh, comforting of the Spirit, the dwelling of the Spirit, all the way through the alphabet of the Holy Spirit. And we'll be studying those together. And tonight, there are seven things that you need to know that happen to you that the Holy Spirit did in Romans chapter 8 we're going to be dealing with tonight. We've been talking about the Father himself, Jesus himself, and tonight we're going to be talking about the Spirit himself and those seven things that the Holy Spirit will thrill your soul. And I hope you will be here tonight with us at 6 o'clock. And uh, now you've spent at home enough. Get back in church. Some of you out there, if you can, I'm not talking about we've got some... Thank God for our dear shut-ins. Thank God for uh, some of them who watch it. But get back in church. Get your family. Get in church. And uh, we'll, we'll, you know, you don't have to shake no hands. And you can wear a mask or whatever, whatever you feel. But uh, let me encourage you uh, to come and be in the house of God with the people of God. And get, get some encouragement, help to help you along the way. And uh, trust that will be so. Uh, here, uh, I want you to see some thoughts we're going to be sharing and I'm starting a series of messages on the foundation of uh, foundational truths of Christianity, where it mentions foundation in the Bible. And we're going to read one of them right here today. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1, and we're going to talk about today the found a sure conversion. A sure conversion. How can we know? Who would we ask? Who could tell us in the Bible what it's really like to be a child of God, to be saved, to be converted? To be born in the family of God. And here you, I want you to look, if you will, at 1 Peter chapter 1. Look at verse 18. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed for corruptible things as silver and gold. From your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Who verily was foreordained. Now watch this phrase. Before. There are three things that took place before the foundation of the world. This is one of them. And he said here, uh, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Now, uh, we're going to look at this thought today, a sure conversion from the, and the foundation of a sure conversion, what it's really like to be converted, to be saved, and to be born in the family of God. Now, uh, you know what? When you think about this, what is Christianity or what is a Christian? I mean, you know, some people today, we, we've got a lot of, uh, and I, I just say this, society has a lot of fuzzy ideas. And Larry touched on that this morning in the Sunday school hour that, you, you know, and then not only that, religion has a lot of crazy ideas and of what really salvation uh, is all about. And uh, for example, well, if you're born in a Christian country, you, you're bound to be a Christian. Is that all there is to it? Or if your parents or your grandparents were Christian, then you must be a Christian. Or, you know, uh, if you come to a church like this, or uh, maybe another 
Christian church, then you must be a Christian. Well, friend, that's what a lot of people think, but you can't find the way of an answer in the Bible. You, you can't show me when you ask a person, when a person tells me, when I ask them about their salvation, I want them to tell me what they did. And I want them to tell me what they're trusting. And a lot of them are trusting. You know what they're trusting? They're trusting in themselves. Exactly putting faith and confidence in me. I, I don't do this or I did, do, I, I did this. And folk, it's not what you did, it's what he did. And thank God he paid it all and all to him we owe. So when you think about this, uh, about these crazy ideas, now Paul tells us that we become new creatures. But uh, you'll find that in Peter here, he tells us in 2 Peter 1, 4, you, you actually were a partaker, a partaker of the divine nature. You've got a new nature. You, you're a new creature in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we find this. So, you know, as I look around here this morning, and I see all of you here. I'm asking you, are you a Christian? From this front to the back, from this front to the back, from you out there, are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? And what is a Christian? What does God's word say about being a Christian? And uh, can you be absolutely sure? And, uh, and you're a candidate for it. But by the way, the only person who's going to heaven is a Christian. That is a person who's truly been saved. And so if that's so, then we need to find out. Is there anything that gives us a crystal clear? Well, there's one man who preached, and, and when he preached, I will tell you what happened. No less than 3,000 souls were saved. And I believe we can ask Peter, Peter, what is it uh, that, that tells us that a person, what they have to do, what the scriptures teach that a person who's saved have done, and what God has done for them in the scriptures. Now, I want you to see, first of all, and look at verse 23, 1 Peter chapter 1. And verse number 23. And here's, and we'll give you seven things. You ought to turn your piece of paper, write these down. I believe it will be a blessing to you. And uh, see these seven things. And by the way, I'm going to ask you, if you're watching, would you uh, answer these questions? Am I a Christian? What is a Christian? And, and first of all, for a sure conversion. Here, he said it's a person, look at verse 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, by the word of God. Uh, he said here, which liveth and abideth forever. And the first thing is that the, the first thing is that you are in a new family. You become a part of. You've had a birth. That there's been a birth take place, and you've been born into God's family. And that's what Peter is saying here. And is now you have if you're saved, you have two birthdays. You have a physical birthday that puts you into your family, that put me in the Ferguson family. But you have another birth that puts you in the family of God. Now, I know there are a lot of people, when you ask them that, they say, well, I know my physical birth, when it took place, give you, you know, the day, month, year. But what about spiritual birth? When did I, be, when was I born again? Now, I know some people say, well, you know, I, I got, I supposedly got saved when I was a child or maybe even older in life, but you don't, you can't really go back. You don't know what you said, what you done. I talk to people like that. I don't know what I said. I don't know what I've done. Are you going to trust that to get you to heaven? I'm telling you right now, I want to know when did you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? When did you, as a sinner, confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead? God said then, thou shalt be saved. And you know what? I'm afraid there are many people, and I think there's people like that. Some might be here this morning. You have truly trusted the Lord. Not the first time you made a profession, but you truly got a possession, but you've never followed the Lord and believe his baptism. You need to do that. that, that that's, a, that's a key thing. If you truly got saved, not only a, a, a personal confession, uh, that's when you trust Christ, but a public confession that you're confessing Christ, hey, I'm saved. I'm a child of God. I want to follow the Lord in believer's baptism. I want to let people know out there what Jesus Christ has done for me. And so we find we're in a new family. And uh, now, why do we need the second birth? Couldn't, why can't the first birth? Why ain't the first birth good enough? Well, see, you're an inheritor of something you got from Adam. And what you got from Adam in the fall was a sin nature. Now, you got that. I got that. You gave it to your children. But don't get mad. Your parents gave it to you. Your grandparents gave it to them. And so you go right on down the line. So why do I need to have the second birth? Well, look with me. Turn back. Keep your place there. But turn back to the book of Ephesians, chapter number 2. Ephesians, chapter 2. I want you to mark these in your Bible. There's three D's here. 
And, and here's why you need, uh, here's why that you need to be saved. And you need a, a conversion and how you can be sure you're in the family. You've had this second birth. Look at verse number one. And you had the quickened who were, here's the first one, circle that, dead, dead. Now don't you let somebody stand up. I don't care who he is. I don't care who they are. And tell you that you're dead. You're, this is a, a spiritual death and not a physical death. Now if you make that person physical death, you're going to believe what the Calvinists believe. And you're going to believe that you had to get regenerated before you got regenerated. You're going to have to get saved before you get saved. You're going to have to get born again before you get born again. Now that's false teaching. That's absolute heresy. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, I'm glad I was dead in trespass and sin. I was dead physically, excuse me, spiritually. But thank God I wasn't dead physically. And also because he walks and I could go through many things. But that's the first thing. You were dead. That's really why you needed to be saved. You were dead in trespass and sin. You weren't dead physically. You were dead in trespass and sin. Now here's the second deed. Look at verse number two. Where in times past. Now this is your past. You walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and power of the air. That's the devil. The spirit that now worketh in the children. Here's the second deed. Disobedience. That's what we did. That's what we were. First of all, we were dead. Secondly, we were disobedient. And your parents didn't have to teach you. I look around here today, and, uh, and uh, Becca, you didn't have to teach Hannah how to, how to tell a lie. You, you didn't have to teach her how to be mean. Uh, we didn't have to teach our children. I didn't say, Larry, thou, you know, slap, slap your sister, and then when she starts crying, point at, point at Donnie and say, he did it. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and uh, oh, no, no, you don't have to teach them. Uh, the Bible teaches about, talks about children of disobedience. Now here's the third day, dead, disobedient. Look at verse 3. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires. Why was my desire like that? Because I had a sin nature. I had an old nature that was given to me. And, and this nature made me desire the things of the flesh, the world, and, and all those different things. Are. So here's the first thing. Uh, we get into a new family. And, uh, and why do we need to be saved? We were dead. Secondly, we were disobedient. Thirdly, we, were, we had desires that uh, by nature we were children of wrath, the judgment of God. You know, D.L. Moody said now, he said, you're going to read in the paper where D.L. Moody died, but he said, I won't tell you what. Don't you believe a word of it? He said, I'll be more alive than I've ever been. I'm telling you right now, D.L. Moody said, when I die, I won't be dead. And if you see my name in the paper, uh, you see, you know, it says a pastor of Dunning Baptist Church has passed on, died, whatever. Uh, listen, I'll be more alive than I've ever been. You know why? Because he's my Lord. He's my Savior. I have life beyond the grave. I have something that will outshine the sun, outlive the years, and outlast a, a time and eternity. Thank God for what the Lord has given us. You know what J.C. Ryle said? If a man is never born again, he says this, if a man is never born again, it's a pity that he was ever born the first time. Amen. And I say that again. If you're never born again, it's a pity that you were ever born to start with. You know what Jesus said? It had been better this man was never born. Talking about Judas. It'd be better you were never you were never born because you're gonna spend eternity somewhere. And here we find in the first a new family. Thank God for this family. Then look at the second thing. Look at verse 18. A new freedom. A new freedom. We're back in First Peter now. And look at verse number 18. There's a new freedom. He said here, for as much as you know that you were not con not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your received by tradition from your uh, uh, excuse me, he said here, vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Now here we find there's a new freedom. Sin makes us a slave. You see that word redeem? Now there, I'll tell you what, when you, anytime you read, see, you can be justified and still be a slave. That's really why when God saved you, no wonder it's so great a salvation. I wrote about, I don't know, maybe eight or Eight things at least I wrote down that happened to me when I got saved. And probably 16 things happened. I mean, I didn't know. I didn't know I was justified. I, I regenerated, uh, reconciled, justified, uh, sanctified. Uh, and all these different things that the scriptures teach us. 
Oh, I'm telling you right now, redeemed. That you see that word uh, he talks about there, redeemed right in the middle. That vain conversation, the word vain, there's empty. My conversation, my life was so empty. He, poor old sinner is going in circles. He just, he's just going around here in circles, and, and his life doesn't have any meaning. He's running to this and running to that, running to this, and he can't find peace and happiness. And, oh, there's a party over here. Oh, there's this going on this weekend. Oh, I'm going over here, and oh, they're going over there, and they're going to be having drinks, and they're having all this kind. So he runs over there thinking he's going to find something to help him, and what does he find? Emptiness. I'm telling you right now, it's vain, as the Scriptures teach us. Oh, how vain it is. And we find here... There is a new freedom. You know, as the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they were redeemed. They were in bondage and slaves, but they got under the blood, and God brought them out just like he brings you out. Just like he said, in whom we have redemption, through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. This, you didn't get redeemed through this church. You didn't get redeemed because you took that wafer on your tongue. You didn't get redeemed because, uh, my friend, of all the religious things. Oh, you, you got all these religious things that people say, well, you know, some call it the whole, Holy Eucharist, and some, uh, they call it transubstantiation, and, and then there's another name, they call it everything, that you get saved because you come and you literally take the body and blood of Jesus. Friend, you'd be a cannibal if you did that. We're not saved by taking the Lord's Supper. We're not saved by being baptized. We're not saved by joining the church. We're saved by, thank God, the precious blood. Redeemed, Amen. redeemed. How I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. That not only are we redeemed, but I want you to look at the third thing. Not only a new family. Aren't you glad? Isn't it good to be in the family of God? <laughs> oh, my goodness, to know we're brothers and sisters. We're saved. We're children of God. You know what? You're just as important as anybody here. You may say, well, those people who got more money than me, I don't make them any better than you. You're a child of God. You're a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You're saved and you're in the family of God. If you're a child of God, you've been saved. Now, a new family, a new freedom, and then there's a new feast. Look at chapter 2 and verse 3. If so be you have tasted, have tasted. He said here, that the Lord is gracious. Have you tasted? Yes. Oh, I'll tell you what. I love old scripture over in the book of Psalms. And, uh, the, and uh, I'll... I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. You go down just a little bit further and say, oh, taste and see, he's good. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, it, there's nothing uh, that the Lord gives us that's not wonderful tasting. Even sometimes the things we don't even want. Uh, some of you had to eat. Now you better eat them. You know you better. You know eat them carrots. You, you, you're good for your eyes. You ever saw a rabbit wearing glasses? But they're good for your eyes. <laughs> and uh, you know those greens. I'll tell you what. I I like some of that stuff. You give Larry greens and cornbread, son. He's in hog heaven. And I'm telling you right now, uh, all that thing. But but the Lord said, oh, taste and see. Oh, if a sinner could just get a little taste. Oh, if he could just taste the goodness of God, the grace of God, the peace of God, the righteousness of God, the goodness and mercy of God. I tell you, he had never wanted anything else. Oh, if he's tasted, and uh, you know why? He will save you. And uh, thank God, I'm glad that I tasted salvation, and it's good. Not only will he save you, but thank God I thought about this, he'll secure you. Aren't you glad we're secure in Christ? I'm glad I'm not trying to keep myself saved. And I'm trying to keep myself from idols and keep myself in the world, but not keeping myself saved. Oh, the security. And then thank God for the wonderful truth that he satisfies. Oh, I'm glad we're singing that song this morning about satisfied. <laughs> And how that we're satisfied in the Lord. I'll tell you what, if you ever come to the Lord Jesus, nothing else will satisfy you. I'll tell you right now, you can try it all. You try, you try. Somebody said, I'm gonna try yoga. I, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna try that, I'm gonna try some of these mind things, and I, I'm gonna try uh, you know, uh, doing this or doing that or doing the other. Nothing's gonna make you happy. Nothing's gonna give you peace but the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And I'll tell you right now, it's a peace that passeth all understanding. It's peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Thank God for this wonderful peace that we have. A new freedom. Listen, a new family. A new feast. Oh, isn't it good to sit at the table of God? And my friend, just enjoy the blessings of God. But then I want you to look at another thing. Uh, look at chapter uh, look at chapter 2 and verse 4 and 5. Here's a new foundation. He says here, look at chapter 2, verse 4. To whom coming as, as unto the li a living stone, disallowed in, uh, indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Oh, he's precious. He's precious. Ye also as living stones, living stones, are built up a, a spiritual house and a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. When I think about this wonderful truth here, not only here uh, am I, uh, is there a new feast? I, 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 I taste it. Is there a new freedom? Thank God I'm not a slave. Is there a new, I'm in a new family. I'm out of Adam into Christ. I'm in a brand new family. But thank God there's a new foundation. And what are you building on? You know, the Bible tells us over there that he said there's some built on the sand. And you know what? You better not build on the sand. You better make sure, get down to the solid rock foundation. And the winds came and the storms and all this and it blew on the house and, and that bit on the sand went, it failed. But that which is built upon the rock, who is the rock? Jesus said, I am the, the rock and he is the foundation. And 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 3 and verse 12. Remember the first time I heard this, and I, I speak often when I hear somebody preach something wrong. And, he, and it says there in 1 Corinthians 3, 12, and no other foundation can be laid than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. You know what he said? It's election. I'm going to tell you right now, you better not put that in there. It ain't election. Well, uh, if, it, if it were, I'd say God voted for me and the devil voted against me. I just went with the Lord. But it's not. And I'm telling you right now, my friend, thank God, he is the rock. He is her fountain. And we're a stone upon that. We're a stone. You can leave here, Brother Bob. Let so you can leave here this morning saying, I'm a stone on the foundation. Dear old saint of God laying there and she'd been in kind of a coma. And the preacher came in, the son ran over, and he said, Preacher. The daughter went over too, said, Mama's been in, in a coma and everything. Said, Mama's sinking fast. About that time she perked up, she heard that. She said, don't you lie to that preacher. You can't sink when you're on the rock. Yeah. Thank God I'm glad I am not on sinking sand. Yeah. I'm not on religion. Right. I'm not trusting the Baptist church. Right. I'm trusting Jesus Christ, my Lord, yeah. and my Savior. Yes. And thank God, I told a fellow the other day, I said, if I go to hell, I'm going to hell trusting the blood of Jesus. Right. If I go to hell, I'm taking the Holy Spirit with me because he said, I'm going to abide with you forever. Thank God, aren't you glad for the promises of his word? Aren't you glad for this wonderful book? Oh, thank God for this new foundation that we have. And uh, we're not building and uh, upon sinking sand. Oh, my hope is built. You say, well, preacher, what's your hope? I'll tell you what, my hope's built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' time. Oh, thank God for the truth we have. And then not only that, there is a new fitness, new foundation, new freedom, new feast, new family. But I want you to look at chapter 2 and verse 24. Here we find a new fitness. Now, we're unfit, but oh, what makes us fit? Who? His own self. Bear our sins. You don't bear them. You, you don't say, well, if my good outweighs my bad. No. He bear, uh, his own self bear our sins in his own body, on the tree. That we being dead to sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes we're healed. Now here we find this, this wonderful uh, truth, a new fitness. Sin made me unfit. Oh, how sin made us so unfit. Unfit for heaven. Undone. God, if we could go through all of that. And uh, you know what? We may be unsaved and ungodly and unfit. But we're not unloved. And we're not unwanted. I'm going to tell you right now, you could go find the wickedest sinner in Kingsport. You go over in Johnson City and find the vilest, most wretched soul there is. You could go to Bristol, find the wicked, ungodly, reprobate, whatever. And 
I'm going to tell you the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, can cleanse that person from their sin. Amen. You can't find nobody. You go in the world, not only just here around us, but everywhere. I'm glad, thank God, the blood of Jesus, God's Son, still cleansed from all sin. Aren't you? I'm so thankful for that. I want you to take your songbook, turn to page 188. I want you to look at this, and some of you know this, you've read this, but it ought to thrill your soul, or oh, the love of God. Those first two verses was a song. And all of a sudden, found in a mental institution because of a person they said was deranged, in a mental institution, that, that their mind was just gone. I want you to look on page 188, the love of God. Look, if in that green book, look at uh, the third verse. This was written out on the wall right there, and they found it there after this person died. Could we with him the ocean fill? And were the skies of parchment made? Were every stalk on earth a quill? And every man a scribe betrayed? To write the love of God. Oh my. Woo. Oh, to write the love of God would drain the ocean dry. Yeah. <laughs> he said, Oh, uh, there, nor could the scroll contain the whole who uh, stretched from sky to sky. Oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong it shall forever more endure. The saints Amen. and angels' song. Amen. Oh, I'm telling you, the love of God. God loved me. Yeah. I was in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. First time I went to Ethiopia, uh, to Africa. And I preached that morning on the, there in Ethiopia. And I preached on the Ethiopia that got saved. Plane, place was packed. I mean, it was jam packed. Hot. Oh, I'm telling you, it's hot. And I tried preaching. God gave me great liberty, and the Holy Ghost of God moved. And there's a, there, I don't know how many. There's a, a guy told me, I've been here uh, 47 years as a missionary, and this is the greatest move of God I've ever seen. And that wasn't because of me. Because, uh, but what got me? They were over there in the choir, and they stood like this on the platform. And they kind of turned a little bit. And those ladies can bend over and touch the floor and still be, I mean, you know, I watch them cook. They cook down like this. I can't even get over and touch my toes. <laughs> but I'm telling you what, they were bending over. You know what they were saying? The love of God yeah. is too high to get over. Yeah. The love of God's too deep to get under. The love of God's too wide to get around. Boy, they're doing all the hand motions and everything like that. She said, why don't you just come on by the way of the cross? <laughs> Woo! And I, I didn't know what they were singing there, but the missionary was sitting beside of me. And he said, uh, he, he was interpreting it for me. I said, did they allow you to shout over here? He said, help yourself. <laughs> I, I let out a war. Hoop and they was, invitation was given. They'd been praying for a man, I think, 27 years he got saved. Little old lady come up there. You wouldn't let, you wouldn't, I'm telling you what, what she had wrapped around her body, you probably wouldn't put out for your dog to lay on. And that little thing come up there and wrapped, and wrapped up Matt and everything. She was crying out to God, oh God, oh God, oh God. All we hear was people. Now the preacher, never seen anything like it in my life, gave him a taste and he said, now sit down. He said, now if you want to be saved, and, and that, of course I was sitting there, but I couldn't understand Am Herrick was what this speaking there, but the missionary sitting beside of me was telling me what they were saying and everything. And I was just sitting there and my heart was just about to leap out of my chest. And then he said, now, I mean business. If you're willing to die for what you're about to do, you stand up, sit up again. I thought, good night. I done run everybody out of the church but this time in America. He done it again. And he made it harder. And brother, there's more people stood up the next time. And they're weeping and sobbing. And then they had workers working with them. I'm telling you what, when I, when I, when I saw that, I'm telling you, and I never will forget the love of God. Oh, the love of God. And that choir singing. Many of you had heard preach right in this pulpit, Brother Tommy Tillman. Tommy Tillman works in Mongolia. Mongolia. He works in Mongolia there with the lepers. And uh, you know, Brother, Brother he's built hospitals there. And all, one of the greatest, probably one of the greatest missionaries you've ever heard in all your life. Brother, he said, I was working with the lepers. And he said, there's a leper sitting there. And he said, just so pitiful, sitting on the curb there. And he said, I walked up to him. And he said, I looked at him. And I said, uh, God loves you. Jesus died for you. And he said, I just sat down beside of him. There. 
He said, that's just a lot of hot air. It's a lot of hot air coming out of your mouth. You don't love me. God don't care anything about me. Tommy said, yes, I do love you. He said, then go home. Go home and eat with me. Go home and sleep with me. And God gripped his heart. And he said, you know what? I don't think I really do love you. He went home. He said, them little, didn't have no enough, just had a little, all his hands are off here. Had places on, part of his nose was gone. And said, he went over and he got some food and got a little hand and put that food. <laughs> he said, put it on my plate. He said, when he put it on my plate, he said, uh, eat that. You say you love me? Tommy said, I eat it. And I said, God, if I die, I'm going to die right here. But I'm going to trust you. He said, uh, now, he said, sleep. Stay here and sleep. He said, uh, he gave me his bed and he slept on the floor beside. And I slept in his bed. <laughs> oh, he said, next morning I got up. And when I got up, he said, uh, the tears are streaming down his face. He said, now I know you love me. Tell me about this Savior. Tell me about this Savior. He said, that man trusted Christ, got saved by the grace of God. He said, I was preaching almost seven miles from there. And he said, I was at this church, and he said, I heard somebody outside, they was hollering. And he said, everywhere he walked, you could see a little bit of blood. And ever uh, he caused this leper. And he was saying, I love Tommy Tillman. I love Tommy Tillman. Tommy Tillman told me about Jesus. He said, I can't come in there, to Brother Tommy, but I love you. He said, the next week I was a further away. And he said, I heard somebody out there saying, I love Tommy Tillman. Tommy Tillman told me about Jesus. Oh, you know what you ought to do? You ought to grab somebody around the neck and hug them the day I told you about Jesus. <laughs> Oh, I'm telling you right now, Brother Tommy, by the way, he was dying. Doctors gave him up, laid him over there to die. Those lepers, you know what they did? Had 17 stents. 17 stents. And uh, laying over there dying, lepers come up there and said, can we have him? And they'd feed him, and they prayed over him, and cried over him, and nursed him back to help. And you heard him preach right in this pulpit. Yeah. I'm telling you, one of the greatest men of God, Tommy Tillman. There were the lepers. He's built hospitals all over. I'm telling you, God, God has used him mightily. It's common in this country. But they let him have, because you know why? They know Tommy Tillman. Well, I'm going to tell you what. I'm glad I know somebody loved me. Yeah. And the Lord Jesus loved me. Gave himself for me. My goodness. I'm not going to get through if I don't go on here. But the love of God has been shed abroad my heart by the Holy Ghost. God committed his love to me. While I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. Yeah. Thank God. Don't tell me you're not loved. You'll allow you, you can't go that way and not find love. You can't go that way. God is love. Yeah. Thank God he loved me. Oh, I can just see them right now. And I was 19, I think 93, there in Ethiopia. And I heard them singing about the love of God. And I'm telling you, when I wish to put that love of God too high, too low, too broad, you just better come on by the way of the cross. Thank God I'm glad I came by the way of the cross, aren't you? Thank God for this love. Oh, thank God for his love. Oh, a new fitness. I'll tell you what, I might have been, as I said, unsaved, ungodly. And, and, I, and I might have been unfit, but I wasn't unwanted and unloved. He loved me. I'll tell you, he loves the worst of sinners. And then let me give you a couple more and we'll be through. Look, if you will, at verse 25. <laughs> he said here, here's, I'm in a new flock. New flock. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. You're like sheep. This one who bore our sins on the cross, paid our debt for us. He said here, he's, he goes after the sheep. Remember, I can't imagine leaving the 99 going after one, but aren't you glad he came after you? Amen. Aren't you glad he found you? Oh, my friend, listen, the new flock, straying sheep. And 1 Peter 2.25 talks about that. And then in Isaiah 53.6, we talk about, think about the saved sheep. 
guy was getting on a train. Been doing a conference hour in Scotland. And uh, the man, a man under deep conviction, he, 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 he wouldn't get saved, but he was under conviction so bad he couldn't hardly stand it. And he come down to the train station. The preacher was getting on the, just to step up. And he said, last call now for, told where it was going. And when he told that, the guy hollered and said, I need to be saved. I'm ready to be saved. He said, I've got to get on my train. He said, sir, you need to come. He said, uh, here it is. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned never one his own way. And the Lord had laid on, on him the iniquity of us all. He said, come in on that all as a sinner and go on that last all as a, as a saint in God. Say, he said, the man just lifted his hand and said, I'm coming. <laughs> Hey, it starts with all ends with all. All are sinners, but all can be saved. I still believe that. Amen. Put me down as a whosoever will. All can be saved. Amen. All won't be saved because they won't trust him, but if they do, they sure will be saved. A new flock, and then there's a new future. A new future. Look at chapter 5 and verse 4. He said here, chapter 5, verse 4, and when the chief shepherd... Oh, the chief shepherd shall appear. Ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Now turn back to chapter 1 and look at verse number 7. The trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing. This is what he's talking about. Starts it out and ends it like, Whom having not seen you love, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to see a person I've never seen. I'm going to a place I've never been. And when I get there, I'm going to feel right at home. Especially at the judgment seat. <laughs> but oh, listen, whom have you not seen you love? He said here, and whom though now you see him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receive the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Turn to 1 John chapter 3. I'll give you a couple of things. And we'll be through. He tells us here, Chapter, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold what manner of love. Now that word manner means it's out of this world. It's foreign. Can't find it here. Love came down to Christmas. Love came down from God. And so here, behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Oh, here, he tells us. He said, the world knoweth us not. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Then look at verse number two. Beloved, beloved now, right now, are you a son of God? And it doth not yet appear. Now these things happen. You need that, you know that phrase right there in the middle just seems to mess up the whole thing, don't it? I know I'm saved, know I'm going to heaven. That's the first part, beloved now, we the sons of God. Now let's don't read that. But when he shall appear, we skipped that part there in the middle, didn't we? That says this, uh, and, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. We don't know what's going to take place. Some will get cancer. Some will have heart problems. Some are going to go through sickness and suffering and sorrow and pain and heartache and death and bereavement. But I'm going to tell you right now, oh, when you look at this wonderful verse, the past, we're a son, beloved now. Are we the sons of God? That's the past. Present, be, be, behold now, right now. I've I, I don't. I've got two positive, one negative. I know I'm saved. I know I'm going to heaven, but I don't know. You ever got on a road and find that you've got some detours? He said, there might be some detours, but you're a son of God. You're going to get there. You're going to make it. You know why? Jesus said, we're going to go to the other side. So those disciples didn't think they was going. They thought they was going under, not over. But they met him who said, uh, listen, the ways are under his feet. So for under his feet, they may be over your head, but they're under his feet. And I'll tell you, he's going to take care of you. And notice here, there are four shalls. Notice them in verse number uh, two, beloved now. We are the sons of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. I don't want to make you want to charge hell with a water pistol. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm telling you right now God is so good God is so wonderful and I'm telling you right now God give us a blessed hope and 
One day we're going to be seeing the Lord come. A new future, a new flock, a new fitness, a new foundation, a new feast, a, a, a new freedom, a new family. And you say, well, what is a Christian? You just heard it. And that's what Peter told us. And Peter preached at Pentecost and 3,000 souls were saved. And I'll tell you right now, I'm so thankful that I can preach and tell that Jesus Christ is coming. Lucked and Drive Baptist Church, Chattanooga, Tennessee. <clears throat> Brother Bill Stafford was the pastor. Lady had a husband, was lost. She begged him to go to church. She did everything she could. She begged, she pleaded, she tried to be such a good wife. She was a good godly. He just wouldn't have anything to do with her. And uh, they had a special day. She begged him, she pleaded, she cooked him a great meal and done everything she could. Just loved and begged and please said, honey, please, 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 please promise me you go. No. Um, well, somebody called and said there was a, had been a, a death in the family. So he said, well, I better go over. So he come to church, cars everywhere, cars all over the place. He walked up and he said, I'll just say to us here, I'll tell you, said, you need to get Miss So-and-So said, uh, there's been death in her family. He said, he got up there, wasn't nobody in the auditorium. It was gone. Nobody. Nobody outside, nobody out there. What happened is, they had such a crowd that morning, they had to go over to the, uh, to the Family Life Center. And they had chairs and everything a lot. Had so many, they just packed that place out. But there was nobody. And all of a sudden, he said, Oh, no, 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 I've missed it, I've missed it. My wife is praying. And all of a sudden, the fellow met him coming out there and said, Sir, he said, uh, what's wrong? He said, I've missed it, I've missed it. Hey, he run through the back of there. Brother Bill Stafford's preaching. He didn't stop at the ushers. He didn't stop. He ran down to the front. The wife looked up and saw him running there and everything. He said, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. But I'm telling you one day, I'm telling you one day we're going to be caught out of here. One day we're going to go home. And I'll tell you what all that's going on right now, it looks like it's getting closer and closer. This is kind of a little dress rehearsal to the, and, and then maybe a practice until the main thing. But when the main thing comes, we're going to be gone. When, 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 the Bible said there's going to be a falling away first, and the apostasy, and then the Son of Man, those two things. Uh, then, then, the, then the Son of Perdition is going to come, the, the Satan himself, Satan incarnate in the mystery of iniquity, and, and, and the Son of the devil. But aren't you glad you're, going to, you're not going to be here? Thank God we're going to be absent from this old body if we die and present with the Lord. Uh, if we're alive, we're going to be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Father, we love you this morning. Lord, I pray that everybody in this building can say I have a sure conversion. I know what I've done. I put my faith, my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Not in the church. Not in themselves. Not in any kind of works. Or trying to do good or be good. God's not going to God's not going to bring you in the back door, friend. God's not going to fudge. He's not going to cook the books. He's not going to say, okay, okay, that's all right. I know you, you didn't get born again, but, but you're a good person. You, 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 you were not saved, but you were nice, and you were moral. Lord, there's people listening to me, maybe right here in this service or on watching this, that they're not ungodly, wicked people, but they're unsaved. Oh, they're unfit, but they're not unloved. You love them, Lord. Oh, for somebody just to cry out, Oh, God. Oh, God, have mercy. Oh, God, save me. Save me, Lord Jesus. I'll tell you, there's never been a person that come and said, Save me, Lord Jesus. I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm lost. I know if, if you don't save me, I'm going to hell. But I'm glad you promised you would. Friend, he will. Will you come to him? Will you receive him? You can come to this altar. You pray right there in your pew, but... We can help you pray with you, or if you're right where you are watching this, would you just trust the Lord Jesus? God's speaking to somebody. Somebody God's fingering around your heart. Today is a day of salvation. Now, now is accepted time. Will you trust him? Will you come to him? I wonder in this building this morning, with our heads bowed, eyes closed, how many could say, Brother Bob, I have a sure conversion. 
And I'm not boasting in me, but I brag on Jesus. I have trusted him. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. Can you lift your hand? If you know that, you're sure of that, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. You may put that, put them down. If you're not sure about that or you don't know, we sure would like to pray for you. Is anyone like that would just say, Preacher, I couldn't lift my hand, but lift it now? Please pray for me. Anyone in the building? Most of the hands went up, but it might be somebody. It might be somebody out there that you'd say, Preacher, it's me. Pray for me. Father, you saw these hands and hearts. You know the need. Lord, I pray this might be the morning. Somebody passes from death to life. Somebody gets that wonderful, blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. And knows what it is to what a, what a Christian really is. Thank you, Lord, for the new family you put me in. All the freedom. I was a slave. I was bound by the cords of iniquity. Oh, what a slave I was. What a, and, and Lord, the old devil had me blinded. But I'm so thankful for you opening my eyes and showing me what I needed. Help hearts today, I pray, to come to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're out of fellowship.